Refitting the Lucky Pigeon as a pro. Here goes the new AMA that I built that goes with the old big hole that I built in my previous videos. It has a lot of pieces, it's the sum of its parts. These Polynesian style boats are simple in the general idea, but actually putting that into practice is pretty complex. The boat has a lot of pieces. Every piece interacts with the other pieces all at once. So you need to have a solid plan to start with. And then it ends up being a lot of work making everything work together in the end. So that's what this video is about. So I wanted to take this time and do a little bit longer intro talking about aspects of the boat that I think are of note. This hole here is filled with plastic bottles and foam. And my initial build video with the big hole that hull is also filled with plastic bottles and foam that I didn't show in my other videos. So here's a clip of that. Plastic bottles to take up some space. I'm going to spray around those for this area. Use less foam. Get rid of some plastic. Water, but it's not going to sink. I can still get back to shore safely. And that's the idea behind the plastic bottles. You really don't need them, but they're there in case you do. Also, the sail of this boat is unique in that I used paint roller extensions for spars. I've never seen that done before, as far as I know. The reason I did that was because the wood spars were a little bit too heavy. I noticed that on the pivot mast, what I call the pivot mast, was a lot of weight being pulled down. I didn't expect that much weight. Even with the paint roller poles, it's pretty heavy. So I changed those out. You'll see that in this video as well. I'd like to talk about some design aspects of the boat that I do like, the flat bottom especially. It makes it very easy to move this boat around. I find putting it on the trailer and maneuvering it on flat ground is so much easier with the flat bottom, so that's been nice. Refitting the Lucky Pigeon as a pro. Check it out. what it will look like and then behind it is the actual hole and the new hole I'm working on. I'm pretty excited about this whole setup but that's it to scale. It always seems that when you make these, they start to have a resonance. It's kind of cool, the sound sometimes. As you're building it, you can hear it. Like right there. Right in the middle. It's cool. I'm figuring out how to attach the mat. It's got to have two pivot points. So that's what I'm working on here.
This is going to be a platform to sit on, uh, move around and do the shunt on the sail. This will be the mast. It'll pivot right there. Started with a piece of plywood, drilled holes with a hole saw, routered those smooth, sanded them, added the 2x2, two two, and then I'm adding this like pre-drilled and countersunk, and then I routered it so it's nice and smooth. All the water will come off. This is the bottom, so it'll drain that way. And the reason for the holes is not so much for drainage. It's actually going to be for to hold onto. So if you're sitting down, I wanted this to be comfortable for your fingers. If the boat's rocking all over the place, you can grab hold. So this is real smooth and rounded. Um, and it also takes a lot of weight out. making this steering oar. I've got a size I think I like. And this board is pretty curved. So I'm gonna try to use that as the foil on one side of the paddle. So I'll, I'll take the curve out on one side. This side curves this way, so that should give me a blade. I'll only have to take down one side. That's due to the fact it's got such a pronounced bend in it. This piece of wood is bent, like I was saying, so what I did was I drew where I wanted to take off the wood so that it actually straightens this a little. I want to make sure I take that off on the same side. Otherwise you get a pretty whack paddle. Extendable paint roller poles. 